Go 1.22, fix in some for loops and go. This is kind of exciting. Go 1.21 includes a preview, uh, let's see, of a change of for loop scoping. We plan to ship in Go 1.22, removing one of the most common Go mistakes. So this is awesome. This is great. If you've written any amount of Go code, you've probably made this mistake of keeping a reference to a loop variable variable past the end of its iteration, at which point it takes on a new value that you didn't want. For example, consider this program. There we go. For V, value ranges, print this. Who hasn't done this one? This also, like if you ever did let I in uh, JavaScript, same same experience. Wait for all Go routines. Uh, the three, let's see, the three created Go routines are all printed the same variable V. So they usually print C, C, C instead of printing A, B, and C in some ordering. Okay, this is cool. So you can now just do this. Although concurrency is often involved, it does not need to be. This example is the same problem, but with no Go routines. For I, okay, we do a little simple one. Uh, append prints function print. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. This is the exact same thing. Exact same thing. In JavaScript, people would create an immediately invoked function that takes in the argument and all sorts of crazy stuff. This kind of mistake has caused production problems at many companies, including publicly documented issue at, let, uh, at Let's Encrypt. <laughs> As an encryption company, getting caught by a for loop. I'm not going to lie to you. It greatly makes me feel less confident. Uh, this is actually a really... This, this happens in a bunch of languages, right? It just can't happen in Rust, right? Let's not. Yeah, this is a skill issue. In that instance, the accidental capture of a loop variable was spread across multiple functions and much more difficult to notice. <laughs> nice. Uh, converts the mapping of a domain to auth2 models into a protobuf authorization map. Okay, so what do we got here? We get a response, we get the authorizations, we go over the range, make a copy of K because it'll be reassigned in each loop. All right, um, there we go. Auth PB, we do a little bit of that, pass in the value, return error if nil, append this, Okay, a reference to K copy. Bam. The, uh, let's see, the author of this code clearly understood the uh, general problem because he made a copy of K. But it turns out the model to auth PB used pointers in the field of V when constructing. Ooh, yep. Yep. Classic. Didn't, didn't V copy. Only gave him the K copy. You can't, dude, you can't give the K copy without the V copy. Yeah, I didn't see that one. Okay, not not skill issue anymore, to be honest. Yeah, this is a tricky one. I see this. This was a tricky one. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you also need to make a copy of V. Tools we uh, have been written to identify these mistakes, but it's hard to analyze whether a reference to a variable outlived its iteration or not. Absolutely. It's, it's very, very hard. These tools must choose between false negatives and false positives. The loop closure analyzer uh, used by GoVet and GoPlease opts for false negatives only reporting when it's sure there is a problem but missing others. Other checkers opt for false positives, uh, accusing correct code of being incorrect. We ran the, analy the analysis of commits adding x equals x lines in open source Go code, expecting to find bug fixes. Instead, we found many unnecessary lines being added, suggesting instead that popular checkers have significant false positive rates, but developers add the lines anyways to keep the checkers happy. Yeah, see, I don't like that. I, I, yeah, this is, a great, this is a great change, by the way, in Go. Let's just avoid the whole effing problem. One pair of examples we found was particularly illuminating. This, uh, this diff was one program. And another program was this. Oof. 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 Uh, let's see. One of these two diffs is a bug fix. The other is unnecessary change. You can't tell which is which unless you know more about the types and functions involved. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Is I don't know. Monitor seems probably correct but maybe this also isn't i don't know what this stop channel is i don't even know how informer i don't know anything right here right i don't even know uh have you used go routines i know go routines i'm just curious which one causes a bug and which one doesn't you can't tell the fix and go one two two we plan to change four loops to make these variables have a per iteration scope instead of per loop scope uh this will change let's see this change will fix the examples above so they will also no longer uh, buggy uh, go. Let's see. So that they are no longer buggy co go programs. It will end the production problems caused by such a mistake, and it will remove the need for imprecise tools that prompt users to make unnecessary changes to their code. This is a great change, by the way. This is a great change to ensure backwards compatibility with existing code. That was my next question, which is goes like goes really all about backwards compatibility. The new semantics will only apply in packages containing a module declared uh, Go 1.22 or later in their Go mod files. This per-module decision provides developer control of gradual updates to their semantics throughout their code base. It also is possible to use Go slash build lines to control the decisions per file. Okay, 
Okay. Okay. Okay, that's pretty cool. Old code will continue to mean exactly what it means today. Uh, uh, the fix only applies to new and updated code. This will give developers control over when the semantics change to a particular package as consequences of our forward compatibility work. Yeah, I mean, you have to do forward compatibility stuff sometimes. And it's not great. Uh, basically, rushed additions, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Uh, let's see. Go 121 will not attempt to compile code that declares Go 122 or later. Well, that makes sense. We will include a special case with the same effect uh, in the point releases of Go 128 and 119.13 so that Go 122 is released. Uh, when Go 122 is released, the code written depending on the new semantics will never be compiled with the old semantics unless people are using a very old version of unsupported Go. Okay. You can go preview the fix. You can do a little Go experiment. Loop var. Okay fixing a buggy test. Although we had no production problems to prepare for that switch, we did uh, have to correct many buggy tests that were not testing what they thought they were testing like this. Oh, that's funny. They had their own test breaking. <laughs> think about, think about how that has to feel when you make a change to be like, okay, this is correct. Go code. All right. Me, the go compiler writer, who's an expert at go. Let me just, Oh, we have a bunch of test breaking. <laughs> like, if even the expert of experts at Go can't write it correctly, it's a good feature. Can we all agree that's probably a good feature at this point? Probably a good feature. Tests are wrong is the worst. Tests wrong are actually the worst. They're actually the worst. Yeah, that's actually really funny. Oh, man. Oh, man. Test all even buggy. That is so funny. That is just so dang funny. Ugh. Love it. I love Go so much. I actually do like Go quite a bit. Uh, let's help those losers. I loved. I love Go quite a bit. So I, I'm happy with all good changes, positive changes. 100% uh, co uh, co on, code coverage on point. Dude, I know. This is exactly why uh, code coverage is just such a stupid term. Is because you can just make bad ones. Tried out HMX Plus Go yesterday. It's glorious. It is. It's legitimately glorious. Hey, I like Go. Go 1.22 is getting better. We're starting to get all these great generic functions of types where we can just do min and max and all these things on any numbers and things are just starting to work. So Go is actually becoming like a really good modern language. And I'm getting very, very, very excited for its future. Love to see this. Love to see some of the fixes coming in down the pipe. Let's go. Agend.